Yeah, this talk is preparing clients. I threw in uh, and ourselves uh, because it, in some ways that's what it's about um, for open source contribution. Um, so, hi, a little background about me. I'm Aaron Couch. I uh, helped create DCAN. I've been working on open data for uh, five or six years. Um, I love uh, cheap pizza. Um, <laughs> If you want me, if, if you really want to, like, it, to go from zero to 10, for me is someone from New York telling me that um, the pizza from New York is better than Philadelphia. Um, <laughs> it hurts because it's kind of true, but um, just don't go there. Um, so I'm from Philly. I've got the white dude privileges. It's a mixed bag, to be honest, in some ways. But um, I just turned 40, so, like, my life is early bedtime and, uh, and dad jokes and I'm currently talking to you right now. We're all stuck in the present moment in this really interesting way. So <laughs> if you want to talk to me about that after the talk, I'd be happy to. Um, but that's not what this is about. <clears throat> so what is at stake? Why do I, why do I care about FOSS, free and open source software? Um, distributed power. Um, someone asked a couple, me like a year ago, like what Am I really like? What's my go professional goal? And it was to prepare ourselves for the singularity. <laughs> um, and I think FOSS plays a <coughs> uh, um, role in that. In that, it, uh, it's it distributes power in a way that is um, really structurally important. Um, it, the uh, freedom part of it is like a visceral thing for me. Um, I recently fixed uh, my dryer. Um, hold the applause, but it was pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> but uh, the belt broke, and I went online and I um, saw a tutorial, and it was not actually that hard. But like, imagine if you couldn't, you weren't allowed to open your dryer. Like, uh, that's kind of what closed source code is like, and um, so I, it's kind of like a visceral thing for me. Um, the co the idea of the commons, like we're all kind of working together as humans is something that open source code speaks to. Um, and it's awesome how it empowers contributors and empowers people, um, empowers leaders to um, help us uh, envision an open society. Why should government uh, care about FOSS? Um, yeah, it's crazy to spend public funds on private code is my favorite. <clears throat> saying around that um, uh, transparency and accountability um, and yeah I mean it's our it's that's it's our code and it is something that we should have access to um, a lot of the private companies create closed ecosystems around their data and their tooling that is pretty antithetical to the public good um, and that's um, problematic as well. Um, so uh, I work in open data um, primarily and w why is FOSS useful for open data? Um, the, if, you, if the tools to unlock the data are closed then the data isn't um, truly open. Um, we uh, <coughs> have um, created a resource called the Open Data Open Source Open Data Manifesto that is, we're in a soft launch right now, <laughs> um, but uh, kind of uh, distills those beliefs and go um, check it out. <coughs> um, so what is not at stake? There's been a lot of hand wringing, I think, in the um, civic tech community around, um, like, are we not having the impact that we want to because, um, like, Civic Tech and FOSS aren't, are not organized. I think it's useful to be honest about what it is and what it isn't. So, like, I think this is what we're doing, and I think it's super important. Um, when I told my mom about this talk, she said, that doesn't sound very sexy. Um, and it's not. But, I mean, <laughs> indoor, pl like, plumbing, like, is super important. And I will scowl vociferously at anyone that disagrees with that. Um, so, it is, um, but it, it's not organ it's not social justice. It's it's a different beast, but it's, it is super important. So, um, 
there was a really interesting talk uh, that Joe gave yesterday about um, connecting people, connecting with people that are um, using software and like does w would open source matter to them. So open source has to have, ultimately we want the tools to be better and I think that's part of the where the the goal for us um, needs to be. I, I shared this because I'm trying to quit Facebook like everyone probably. Um, but um, so my dad died recently and um, someone shared something really personally um, powerful about my dad that I wouldn't have had if I wasn't on Facebook. And so um, I want to live in a world where I woke up, I, you know, I wake up having an open source phone that doesn't have data that is controlled by Google and um, I want to interact with my lived environment with all these tools. Um, but as we build and envision, ultimately people are using these and so the theory verse practice is, um, is important. So who, who pays for all these open source uh, tools that we think are important? Um, VCs, clients, foundations, governments, etc. And so where, do, how do we like, how do we actually bring these things forward? Um, this is kind of often what happens with open source. So we have, you know, client A, client B, um, they have their feature set. Some of it overlaps with maybe something that's a little bigger. So um, it, similarly here, these features, you know, maybe aren't useful for, for this kind of core open source thing. Um, so what if, like, when is the right time to actually uh, contribute back? Like, is that, is that a bad thing right there if you're mostly using just extensions and configuration and you're not contributing back? Um, it has to be about value, so that's something that really just depends on the project. So I, what is the value proposition of clients for f free and open source software? Um, I left this, I left this blank on purpose. Um, so I'm going to ask the crowd, does anyone, why, why should a, why should a client want to use free and open source software? Does anyone? Um, proprietary software can be uh, produced by companies that will go out of business and then you can't use the tool anymore. So uh, just to repeat for the recording, proprietary software, vendor lock-in, proprietary software can uh, go out of business and then you're, you're, you're screwed. Any, any other reasons why free and open source software is important for clients? Um, better support, potentially. Um, Depends, yeah, better support. Actually, uh, Arrow is on the Civic Actions team who does support, and I think he does better support than... Uh, anyone else <laughs> I know so so there's a lot of value in free and open source software why do we want why why would clients actually want to contribute to free and open source software does anyone to ensure continuity uh, to, sh to ensure continuity great any other reasons it's broken. It makes me angry. <laughs> <laughs> the visceral one. It's broken. It makes me angry. Uh, anything else? Build in-house skills. Build in-house skills. Uh, yeah, that, uh, one of the my favorite stories about uh, uh, Decan is that um, we uh, created a portal for uh, Jamaica and um, hosted it and did all the work. Um, and last fall, they um, basically took it over and are now hiring people, now have people in Jamaica um, running the servers, running, like doing it f fully. So that's another, um, you know, potential value is that for governments especially is that instead of ha having those jobs out in Sil Silicon Valley, having them in um, like VC funded kind of uh, structurally hierarchical places, there's people in Jamaica that have got the training have and, and have taken over the tool. Um, so one, one uh, big value um, proposition uh, for clients to contribute to FOSS, and I think this is maybe the biggest one that I would argue, or 
um, propose when talking to clients is that owning features is expensive. You don't want to. You you don't want to. Um, yeah, own a certain feature because there's no public documentation for it. There's no public upgrade path. You're forking, um, and that's that's really expensive. Um, it all it keeps the nerds happy. I mean, is that <laughs> is that kind of what we're saying as well? Um, so, in terms of talking to and convincing clients to adopt open source, there's um, a whole there's the whole the whole <coughs> the whole team needs to be involved in it. Um, it, it can't just be uh, it can't just be these folks. Um, so let's let's look at that uh, kind of cycle. In some ways, um, the community is kind of like the first place that um, those kind of that those discussions are, are had, um, and then sales and marketing is a bigger channel. Then once you've got a client, you're going to onboard them. Then you have the agile kind of process. Hopefully, you're making big, fe awesome features, and hopefully, you're having a much uh, bigger impact. Um, so community, um, here we are. It, we can all, um, you know, pat ourselves on the back. Um, but are, are we in the right communities? Or do we know what the client communities are? Do we know what the user communities are? Um, and the idea of community itself, like all of the all, much of the engines that the features and, and software that we are interested in requires a community, and a community is something that is not, there's not like a, a direct funding model for. So um, that's a tension that uh, is, is hard to resolve. Um, so in terms of uh, sales and marketing, you, it's important to talk about free and open source software, right? Uh, so this is civicactions.com. Um, bef before the talk, I was, um, going to kind of show like, okay, you know, here's how we're talking about free and open source software. And um, um, that's the, uh, um, are you even talking about open source? Uh, so I was like, oh man. Um, so that's the uh, control F. Um, we're not even mentioning open source. Poop. Um, and, and additionally, so the, the next step, I, I didn't capture that, but I clicked, we have a decan and open data page that we haven't updated in probably a year and a half. Um, similar, probably marketing story. We are working on updating this, I promise. Um, but uh, I was like, okay, certainly decan, our open source catalog says open source. It was the same thing. We didn't even mention it. Ouch. Um, our, our, source our source code is for the site. It's in Gatsby uh, Markdown. Um, so at least we mentioned open source in 35 places, but most of them are either interviews or if you scroll down, um, like everyone's bio says open source. So it's interesting, like, and it's, it's something that we value and try and um, uh, make sure that we, tr we do communicate that to clients, but oops. So the first step of once, you, when, once we're past the sales and marketing, um, so this is my reaction to, to lawyer stuff. Um, <laughs> but it, like it's super critical. Um, are you allowed to actually, are you even allowed to contribute? Like <laughs> um, you need that bare minimum. Um, this, this is our lawyer. He's, he's amazing. Um, his name is Mark Jones. He was super um, stressed about me having only one slide about this. He, <laughs> he, gives, uh, he gives like two week in depth primers about, or trainings about um, open source licensing, licensing. But if you're interested in exploring it a little bit more, um, this is maybe the best place to start. <clears throat> I'm not sure who this is, but he's talking to our security, our, our CHOP security person. Um, so that's even more scary. Um, lawyers and security people. Um, so, okay, we've got the, we've, we've passed that gate. We've got the right um, license. Now we're actually starting the work. You know, you, we have that, 
that that first that first client meeting where you're um, where if it's a great relationship you think back it's like your first date you know everyone is happy and um, but are, are you actually talking about open source contribution from the beginning of the project um, so <laughs> surely you're talking about f FOSS at that point right um, but how do you even talk about that like what what are the what are your goals and your, your um, KPIs, uh, key performance indicators? Can you measure what your open source contribution can be? Like, can we have like a linter that says, okay, you know, of the amount of um, code that we created, uh, we are publishing 10% or 20%. Like, would that would that even be useful? I mean, I think the biggest thing is. Is, is features, like what features are you building and are you contributing those back to um, where you started? Um, so typically, um, there's this difference between like a conf configuration and, and, um, and actually feature building. So if you're working on WordPress, like a WordPress site and you actually contribute something back to like WordPress core or like a, a new theme or something like that's amazing because um, it's such a big project like if you're using something that's newer um, that contribution maybe should be bigger um, or if you're um, trying something if, if it's kind of a greenfield project like maybe the whole thing should be open source uh, I have the frictionless data stuff here because I'm super excited about that and I'm hoping that people are going to contribute that more um, so how, like how do we okay we've we, we've gotten past that first meeting we've gotten the client convinced that okay X feature we're gonna we're gonna open source we can either like as a new project, we're going to contribute it back. How do we actually get that into the um, the project? So this is my this is my new kind of big thing, like, or this is my thesis maybe, is that uh, personas are a way of injecting um, the open source user stories into the project. Um, so. Uh, Here's two uh, uh, kind of open source personas for us, an adopter. Like, what do they want in terms of features? Like, what's their experience? And how can you actually build that, create user stories in the Agile, um, in the Agile Atom? So that a Agile is, Atom is like the, the place where all this work happens. And we have the technology. We can inject user stories directly into backlogs um, around this. So. As an open data adopter, I want a new XYZ. Um, that's one strategy that I've started working on. Another is to, like, within Agile, the day after the sprint is over, maybe those are like a day or two of cleanup. Um, so yeah, these are some strategies around uh, that kind of um, uh, that kind of uh, contribution. So, um, yeah, that's a good stopping point, I think. Um, does anyone have any questions or discussion topics? Okay, also just to say this mic is working, but it's recording, but it's not projecting, so you speak quite loudly. Hi, um, I was wondering if, uh, so like when you're like creating like open source software, like some users are great, uh, but like you might get like a small minority of users who like, why didn't you answer my email within the hour? So I was wondering if you had any like um, tips or guidelines about like setting expectations about the project. Yeah, I mean that th there's a like it could be you could give a whole there's a whole kind of area of like community building that. Um, you need to ha try and figure out how to to uh, allocate for and manage, um, and like hopefully, it's like a little bit of a chicken and egg thing. Like hopefully, you can have enough clients where you can devote the time to that. And um, yeah, within the w within kind of like the the program of your your work, allocating for that is is important. Um, 
but it's hard because those are the that's another reason that like the personas idea is important to me because like those aren't your paying clients and so they just like get like it's hard to um, address that through a lot of the kind of agile processes that we have I can, I can describe an experience that I've had on open data projects. Um, design them to outlive a company and then get a company to pay the development of the data. And then if the data goes away, or if the company goes away, you can keep working on it in future projects. Um, this is what MapsN has done and is continuing to do at other companies. Uh, not so much a question. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's exciting because um, yeah, the project is bigger than the company. That's actually what happened with with Decan, um, and Ccan exists outside of a specific company, um, and it's awesome because you can keep working on things that are interesting to you outside of like whoever your quote unquote whatever the structure is that uh, engenders paychecks. find that in your experience anyone actually buys like the moral imperative for companies to contribute to open source so I'm thinking specifically of folks who like or companies that are really into using open source but basically don't contribute back money or labor to it so ha in your experience has anyone actually been like yeah it's the right thing to do and not have to make all of these sort of markety value propositions yeah, I mean, I think I think one of the hard things is that a lot of people think it is the right thing to do, but then if it's not articulated why and how, then it 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 just creates like like who's actually going to do it is is a problem. Like we have a yeah, there's a I've had experience with a bunch of clients that are like, yeah, open source, we're totally into it, but then like you're like, okay, well, this feature is going to take longer because we're going to contribute it back and they're like well but we need that f <laughs> like <laughs> like I, but we're we're launching soon so why you know yeah I, my question is basically like does the moral argument ever work and so if the answer is no i think it does i mean i think it does um but ultimately it's like it it shouldn't we shouldn't rely on the moral argument like because it does produce better value for people um if it's done right Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you.